Exposing cinematic video is not that simple, but we're about to make it a piece of cake. The obsessive thing, pay. It's really easy to get into the technical, complicated nuances of this subject, but that's not helpful for you, so I'm not even gonna talk about it. We're not gonna go into the science, cause it's just, it's not relevant to you shooting good video. We're gonna make this real simple. It's called the exposure triangle, and there are three things you have to keep in mind. It affects aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. And if you change any of these, it's gonna affect all of them. Let's start with shutter speed. For video, it's super simple. You just always double the frame rate. You'll have the most natural motion blur when you do that. If you go lower, you're gonna have a really long motion blur. It's gonna look weird and feel weird. If that number's higher, you're gonna have this staccato, really like action-packed, awkward looking video. It's just not gonna feel right unless it's double the frame rate. If you're at 30 frames per second, put your shutter speed at 60. If you're shooting slow motion at 60 or 120 frames per second, 120 or 240. If you're shooting 24 frames per second, like I am here, you put your shutter speed at 50. The next is ISO. And it's just a brightness, like turning up the brightness of your monitor at home. And if you are a YouTube creator or someone that's filming yourself a lot, I would just set it to auto. It's going to pick the best number for you in each scenario if your metering is set right. Make sure your metering is set to zero, not negative, not negative one, not plus one, not negative two, not plus two, just zero. If you do that, it will make sure you have the right exposure. Now, if your footage looks grainy, you've probably set your ISO too high, so you need to make the aperture lower in order to fix this. That's the only problem you're gonna run into with an auto ISO is that it's actually too dark in your scenario. The ISO number is actually autoing to a number that's too high and your shot looks terrible. So if it's grainy, that's why. Now aperture. Aperture is the one that we really need to focus on because that is the one that you could be changing in a daytime scene versus a nighttime scene. You're gonna change your aperture. What aperture is, is it's actually the opening of the lens. So different lenses will have different abilities in the aperture. If you're looking for the cinematic, out of focus background, bokeh out background, nice video, you want your number as low as possible on aperture. This lens here, it's set at a four. Some lenses go to 2.8, some go to 1.5, 1, 1.4, 1, uh, some are set at 5.6 or 8. Now those higher lenses, those are, those are gonna be cheaper lenses with a higher number, and you're not gonna be able to have as out of focus background as I have here, just like the portrait mode on your iPhone. If you want that look, you need to set the aperture to the lowest number that your lens allows, and you need to rely on autofocus. That's the issue here with aperture is you're gonna be relying on autofocus if you're doing a YouTube creator type setup like this, and you need your autofocus to be good and dialed in. Now, if you don't want to rely on autofocus, then just set the aperture to a higher number and you don't have to worry about it. If you're at like nine, 10, 11, almost everything's gonna be in focus, but there's less light getting into your camera, so the ISO has to go higher, which means you could experience some graininess. So that's the issue you're gonna have to balance. So let's talk about indoors versus outdoors with your aperture. If your ISO is set to auto and your shutter speed is set to double your frame rate, outdoors in a bright sunny day you're not going to be able to get the aperture down to a low number and have the autofocus background it's just not going to work it's going to be too bright because when you lower the number more light enters the lens and it gets brighter and then if you make the number greater in aperture maybe f11 f22 that's when there's less light entering the lens so you're probably only going to be able to have your aperture at about 8 11 or 15 or 22 outdoors with your ISO set at auto and your shutter speed set correctly. Now for cinematic video, you don't wanna change your ISO and you don't wanna change your shutter speed. You want the ISO as, as low as possible and you want your shutter speed always at that double your frame rate. So the only way to get your aperture down to like four, five, six, is to get ND, which is a filter that you put over the lens. In the description below, I will show you the filters that I would recommend. It's a variable ND, so depending on how bright it is outside, you can clock the ND in order to lower the light entering the camera 
at a lower aperture number. So in a lower aperture number, more light is entering the lens, so it's better indoors in a lower light situation versus the bright sun outdoors. It's not gonna work unless you have ND. And a higher aperture number means less light is entering the lens, which is better for outdoor shots. I know that got a little complicated there, but I think if you can figure out your aperture and how to use it indoors versus outdoors, that's a huge thing. Now, if you don't care about depth of field and you're outdoors, just set your aperture to a higher number, eight, 11, 15, 22, whatever looks right. And what's awesome about that is you don't have to worry about autofocus because pretty much everything is on the same plane of focus. Once you set the focus right, everything you point the camera at is probably gonna be in focus unless you come really close like this, which that's struggling with. Comment down below if you have any questions or I missed anything or you want anything more specific on the subject. I'm trying to keep this as tight as possible, as small of a video as possible. You don't need to know the science. This is what you need to know. Hope it made sense. Hope you learned something. Stay obsessed.